जय श्री राधे जय गुरुदेव Our reading from Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhaniti, verse number thirteen. O Queen of Vrindavan, when Madhupati Mohan, the Rasika B. Holds your most cooling lotus feet that are filled with the honey of nectarian love taste. To his heart, he extinguishes the terrible fire of his desire. I take shelter of these feet. O Queen of Vrindavan, when Madhupati Mohan, the Rusik bee. Holds your most cooling lotus feet that are filled with the honey of nectarian love taste. To his heart, he extinguishes the terrible fire of his desire. I take shelter. Of these feet. This is also beautiful to read in the origin Sanskrit. There is a such a beautiful word. Word. The Queen of Vrindavan is the Vrindavaneshwari. It's such a beautiful word. Tavaiva, Tavaiva, we also know. Pataravinda, Prema Amri Taika, Makaranda Rasauga Purnam, Ridyar Pitam, Madupate, Smara Tapam Mukram, Nirva Payat. Parama Sitalam Ashrayam. So beautiful. Sometimes it's also very nice to read the origin. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, very sweet. Yeah, Vrindavaneshwari. Wow. So beautiful word, as <laughs> and also when we do this, sometimes then we come more close to the origin word mm -hmm. and to the. I don't know, is it Sanskrit or Bengali or whatever, but it's very sweet and beautiful in the origin. Yeah, definitely strong feeling is there, especially when it's read beautifully. <laughs> Sri Radha's cooling lotus feet. Sri Pod. Suffers of separation from Swamini and humbly prays, O oh, Swamini, 
cast your favorable glance on your lowly maid servant. One may ask, Swamini's compassion is unlimited. How can she stay at ease while her maidservant suffers so much? The answer to this question is, One must experience separation in order to increase the happiness of union. Well, I love in Tripod's prayer, he considers himself. A maidservant. Cast your favorable glance on your lowly maidservant. It's like Buddha always beautifully describes, like we already have it. The, the qualification is already there. It already exists within us. We just have to realize it. We have to think that we are that we are that we are Radharani's maidservant. It's not that we're um we're unqualified to be a maidservant. We just need to come into the feelings of, of acknowledging, accepting ourselves, that we are here, seeing ourselves in this identity. And then one must experience separation in order to increase the happiness of union. Srila Rupa Goswami teaches us just as one can remove the dirt from a cloth with alkali and thus can not only give it its original color back but can even make its color brighter than it was before washing it. So also, one cannot nourish the experience of meeting without first feeling separation. The word raga means both color and love. Not only that, the Goswamis also say that the ecstasy of separation is superior to the ecstasy of meeting. And that is why there's so much separation experienced in the pure, sweet pastimes of Raj. The gopis all have Mahabhav, so they are constantly feeling separation 
from Mohan, even when they are actually united with him, this is called Prema Vaichitya. Just to, to remember, this it's a, this this priority of longing <laughs> is is the product of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's nature. We already had God as love as union. God is one, God is undivided, God is pure ocean of love. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by taking the mood of Radha, changes himself into two. And introduces a new idea of the divine, which is love as longing. So it's no longer the motionless ocean of endless love, which God is, but this um, separation. They're now separated, which means that love takes the form of desiring, of relation, and all relation is longing. It's not just a new experience of love, it's a new experience of uh, God. That brought up one question for me, so it was a little bit technical, but I was wondering, um, before Mahaprabhu, he brought the feeling of Manjri Bhav to the world that hadn't yet existed. And I was wondering also, was Radharani known or talked about? Um, in the here in this world before he came, or did he also bring bring this this kind of feeling and um, opportunity to know of her? Oh, she's been yeah, no, she's been around <laughs> in different forms, in different traditions, in different stories. Uh, not always. The, the the consort the lover of Krishna, in some traditions even married to him, and in other traditions not related. So it's really in this in our tradition, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, that she takes this special role through the the Rasa dance, becomes you know the best, the selected one, the chosen one. From, from Krishna. But she takes on a special role and becomes then a, a goddess of love only for us, only in our tradition. And this would be, this would be her greatness because in verse one it says, if Gora had not come, how would the world have been? Who would have taught the world the greatness of Radha and the limit of Prema Rasa? Ah, or maybe this is the greatness that you're referring to is this like special attribute this quality of her where she becomes the the focus hmm. the object is what you like to say <clears throat> okay thank you my dear actually these books are not exist before they are uh 
just after Mahaprabhu opened uh, uh, this most intimate world of Radhika's feelings to uh, to us. And this is a uh, it's actually the mercy of Mahaprabhu. She put this in the heart of the Goswamis and the followers, disciples, and uh, so they can uh, they can open it to us also. No, that was not before in the, in any scriptures was not this most intimate leela. It was not not knowing. Maybe some babas, I don't know, but I, I cannot imagine that it's, it really is uh, found it given by Mahaprabhu. No? The feelings of Swamini and the feelings of the Manjaris. So that switch to the complete view from the controller, how good they uh, explained many times, to the uh, absolute truth. And this is uh, completely new. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. I was wondering. Um, so I asked this already one time, and I think Udava replied that this is the experience actually of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and one uh, somebody wrote it down. So. I was wondering, is this ever somewhere stated that these visions, that these experiences have been received by him? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think this is, I mean, remember Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is Krishna. Mm -hmm. So what it's a description of is what happens in the spiritual abode of Krishna, the spiritual world of Krishna. And uh, that's the secret that's been revealed to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What the what heaven looks like, to put it in sort of Christian terms. Here we have a snapshot of heaven. Or actually, it's not a snapshot. It's quite a big, long mm. picture of it. But no, it's like a, it works like a revelation. Mm. Chaitanya's mercy, mercy is that he comes and gives us, tells us about what what's really going on in his inner self, and what's really going on in the inner self of God is a love affair, endless, growing love affair. Just splendid. What is a little bit miraculous is that we know from the life of Chaitanya that he, you know, spent ten days instructing Rupa Goswami. You know, he said, "Come over, and I'll, do, I'll teach you a little bit." And yeah. then, out of these ten days of instruction, come a hundred books of all the six Goswamis. So he's, you know, he, he didn't just instruct with knowledge, he instructed with the mood, he instructed with, uh, he planted the seed of the feeling in the Goswami's heart so that they can go out and then write all these books. There's so many books, you know, and they were only together for a short time. They was genius, huh? Well, uh, yeah. this, this, this brothers, they was uh, unique. You can imagine this capacity, how many different languages they spoke and how genius what they are all studied. It's, it's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Mm. Um, Vanana, you can read everything there. 
mm. which kind of relationship uh, they had. Uh, there are so many. There are dozens of of uh, explanations of the relationship between the disciples and Mahaprabhu, and it's also described uh, which role they are, they had they have in the uh, spiritual world. Many of them are uh, uh, eternal liberated souls, and this is very nice described in the. Chaitanya Charitamrita, where they lived, where they took birth, what the name of the father and the mother is, and it's very, very beautiful in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Krishna Das Kamaraj made a, a big uh, thing to us that we can come close to this, and we find also the the place where. They, uh, they had their own temples and where the holy places are. It's, uh, um, it's actually beautiful, but even these two books here, Villa Kushmanjali and Radha Sudhanidhi, they are really unique, even in the, and there's many books that Goswamis wrote. Mm. Yeah, it's just so much unknown to people outside of this um, circuit. So if in, in my yoga, other yoga, I, I share, we, we are reading these texts, they are like, huh? Eh? But what is this? <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> and like, you know, and, and what can I say, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, yeah very, it's, very, it's very marginal, so to speak. You know, it's it's unknown outside of the ten square kilometers of Vrindavan. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Nadi. Even I feel in in sometimes within the ten square kilometers of Vrindavan. <laughs> exactly. Being in Gurudev's room and having these like incredible souls come in, and I'm kind of like sitting in the corner and listening to these conversations and Gurudev, you know how he's always like feeling and testing and no idea what he's actually doing, but I just hear him asking questions of these, of these souls that are walking in that have been in the Bhakti tradition for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years and listening to them, how they describe Chaitanya and these other deep subjects that, that we receive so much mercy from our Gurudev in the explanation and the feeling and the mood of it was, it was, um, well, for me, it was really eye opening and really almost like shocking because I have no experience outside of like the Mundir Mundir Bhakti. And so to kind of begin to get some little windows into other parts of the Bhakti world, even within, you know, this even within the bhakti world where these texts are known the interpretation and the mood and the feeling of of these and the way they're read and interpreted is um to me really 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 special here and certainly feels differently when i the few times i've heard others discuss or or describe it yeah there is a, a real revolution now in india starting to come to vrindavan it's it's getting very popular so this is uh, because of uh, all the books and uh, many Western devotees came. And so uh, um, there, there were many, uh, um, what, how to say, very popular uh, preacher also. Kripalu also with his Prem Mandir. This is now a famous uh, uh, white shining temple there in Vrindavan. Uh, so many, many Indians, uh, get aware of, of this movement and, uh, of Radharani. And when they come to Vrindavan, everyone is not Omna Shivaya or whatever. No, or, or only Radhe Radhe. And so you see that in around 30 years, a small village from 5,000 people, is getting a, a, a huge uh, uh, city, uh, and uh, yeah, sometimes you don't know how to move 
uh, in the streets. So, so many people coming. And, um, yeah, we can imagine that they're in the area of Delhi. There are around 15 million people only there. What to speak about from other place in India? If, if they uh, become aware of this movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is amazing what happened there. And this is original what is, uh, what Mahaprabhu said about this. In every village and every town, they will chant the holy names. And this is very beautiful. So that is a, a little funny also to see that at first, uh, uh, because of Mahaprabhu, um, of, of, uh, Prabhupada, it starts outside India. I mean, it not starts outside India. He, he came origin from India, <laughs> but uh, this movement uh, is getting popular uh, because first the Westerners came, and so the Indians uh, was uh, oh wow, they come to India because of our culture and our knowledge. And so they uh now it's in India is getting amazing what happened with this movement. Vrindavan nowadays it's it's uh famous. Even the greatest saints feel themselves blessed when they can witness the gopis love in separation. When Uddhava like, Ma like Uddhava, no? the greatest saints. Who is this? No? Like, <laughs> not. Uh, I mean, Uddhava is sent by uh, by uh, Krishna, and uh, when he uh, <clears throat> get this this love of the gopis, when he see that he is uh, astonished, and he after all he feels blessed. He saw this love in separation when he came. The agony in Vrindavan. Right? Yeah. And he is one of the greatest saints. <laughs> this is really happening. Uh, it's all described. So the greatest saints, saints feel themselves blessed when they can witness the gopis love and separation and he was the one who who saw this and uh, uh when krishna was not in Vrindavan, so how much they are suffering and then he changed himself yeah. good morning oh. so nice to see you so oh, he, yeah, was, yeah. He, he was skeptical when he first came to Vrindavan and then he saw, like you say, the the power of the the love. And love and became, separation. Yes, love and separation, and he became a a bhakta. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, and now it's uh, in the in the in the coming text. It's described. Sorry, I, I was too fast. I thought, I thought how beautiful. I was feeling how beautiful when I flipped the page, and I was like, "Oh my!" 
is exactly what Gordon's saying. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. He's like, no problem. When Uddhava Mahashaya came to Vraj, he told the Vraj Davies, You have shown great mercy on me by exhibiting your ecstatic love in separation. O oh, greatly fortunate girls, if you had not suffered so much out of separation, Krishna would never have sent me here to console you. And I would never have been able to see your astonishing love for him. Feeling great separation, Sripad thinks there is no other recourse but to take shelter of Sri Radha's most cool lotus feet. Then, so that means that the that the love in separation is like a fire. It's like a hot fire inside our hearts. And there is only one thing that cooled this, this hot fire inside. Mm -hmm. These are our Swamini's lotus feet. It's the only, the only shelter for, to cool this fire and separation. And this is what it says in the verse when Mohan takes her most cooling lotus feet to his heart. He extinguishes the terrible fire of his desire. Yeah. That not means actually that the feet are cooling. They are also the temperature, but to come together to get the darshan, this is the mercy of a lotus feet. When this lotus feet touched our heart, then the, this hot fires get cooled. This touching of the lotus feet <clears throat> to the heart can perhaps also mean to to absorb the mood, the feelings. Think of how Gurudev says his Gurudev is always with him. Because he's absorbed, surrendered to the mood, the feelings of his Gurudev. Hmm. And actually, the touch of her lotus feet, even if we see this when they touch our head, that is the picture we get then. But 
actually had touched our heart. We put the lotus feet on our head, but our heart is touched by this <laughs> when she touched us. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this, we prepare a place in our heart so that she can touch, her, put her lotus feet on the on our heart. But even even darshan is relation, you know. Yeah. The the longing is never um, extinguished. But touching the lotus feet means having the mercy of the relation, so that we can continue to increase our longing for her. It's never the union that ends the longing. It's always the relation that continues the longing. Yeah. And uh, Mahatma Ji just read about this when they feel in union even separation. Hmm. What was the word? Prema Vaichitya, right? Mm. Prema Vaichitya is uh, even when they are in union, they have the feeling of a separation. This is uh, amazing. Prema Vaichitya. And this is the this is the gift of Mahaprabhu. This is the new kind of <coughs> love, the love which is not motionless but always energized and longing. And divine love, Prem, is longing, it's wanting, it's burning. But Chaitanya always keeps us awake. <laughs> Never puts us to sleep with love. He keeps us awake with love. There is the goal is never reached in that uh, meaning. Right. We always, even there is, we reach the goal, but still we're longing for the goal. This is a, a it's also a, a m mystery. Mystery? Is exactly. Right? A mystery. Yeah. It's, it's not. Not that one can understand this, and we cannot describe in words. We can try, but it's a kind of a feeling. This is amazing, and it's a mystery to our. It's inside our Swamini's heart also, and the gopis. And never described before, right? right. Who, who described this kind of a, of a feeling before Mahaprabhu? It's a deep emotion in Swamini's heart and nobody can describe this and nobody saw this before. Because only the Marjorie can see. The previous example that we are just sharing with, with Uddhava Mahashaya is talking about the, the gopis' <clears throat> love and separation. And even the gopis' love and separation is strong enough to 
to bring Uddhava Mahashaya and to have him share that you have shown great mercy on me by exhibiting your ecstatic love and separation. Mm -hmm. And so what to think if the gopi's love and separation is strong enough to give this feeling and to send, have, have Krishna send Uddhava Mahashaya to them, we can only begin to imagine what the source of Mahabhav, what her feelings of love and separation must be. So the gopi's feelings are strong enough to draw the attention of Krishna to send his best friend there to console them. What of Radharani's love and separation? Feeling great separation, Sripad thinks there is no other recourse but to take shelter of Sri Radha's most cool lotus feet. Then a new pastime suddenly appears before Sripad's love-anointed eyes. He sees Srimati sitting in a trysting bower, <clears throat> agitated by feelings of separation from Mohan. who is somewhat late for his appointment. Srimati embraces her girlfriends and laments as follows. I made the bed for my lover and strung a flower garland for him. I prepared betel leaves and I lit the lamps. I made the bower house very beautiful, but oh, my friend, all this will turn out differently. I will not meet my hero, who is an ocean of attributes. <laughs> I deceived my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law to come into the deep forest and with great effort I decorated my youthful beautiful body to meet my lover I'm looking down the road for him to come telling my mind that this crown jewel of relishers will certainly come now. Thus sings the wretched Chandidas. Wow. 
Chandidas is poet or who is Chandidas? Poet. Wow. In, he is from a very great poet, Chandidas and Vidyapati. Wow. Beautiful words, huh, Gurudev? Mm. He is also writing two meanings. Mm. Poems. The deep thing is this, that meaning is something and poem is something deeper. How you like to understand? So deeper, Gurudev. Deeper. <laughs> Material people will understand different way. A spiritual will understand different way. <laughs> Can you explain, Gurudev? Like you see, all the scriptures in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu line. <laughs> Written is something like a Srimad Bhagavad Gita, but behind meaning is something more deep. As per my realization, we understand the subject. Same thing, other will, material person will read, he will understand different way. A spiritual will read, he will understand different way. And why we are reading, listening to improve our understanding and realization. I don't want to divert. We want to fix our feeling in one nature. A different, different, uh, it stays different, different feelings. But we want to be in a sthai bhav, in bhav lasrati. Yeah. And this is rare to even everyone to do that. Right, Udamji. Right, Udamji. And why we are reading every day, listening, that everyone fixed this nature not jumping nature. What I felt in this verse, Mahaji, uh, what you just read is uh, that Swamini make no difference between her and the maids of I decorate my useful, beautiful body. Oh. But who decorate the useful, beautiful body of, of Swamini? Manjari. Manjari is doing. <laughs> so, but she's not different between when she say, when Swamini say, my, I, I decorate. So she is uh, make no difference between I and my maidservant. Mm -hmm. She say I decorate. Mm -hmm. So it's the same for her. 
if she put the all decoration on her body or if the maid servant do this is both is i this is the closeness of swamini hmm Even this is that krishna is doing although he yeah. is a foreigner for that <laughs> he is a foreigner for doing this his nature is to enjoy her. but he want to servant of radhika to learn this nature although he is a foreigner for that subject he is not never idea any idea about that Sometimes I think that Swamini is even closer to her maid servants than to Mohan. <laughs> yes. She make she make no difference. And this is a Krishna has and Chaitanya means this is a in Krishna happen to test in the manjari mood. to the serve to radhika to to feel and give to the whole world but it's never described that the manjari's desire the feelings of krishna krishna, krishna is the three reason confidential reason you read uh, it will be very crystal clear this reason is a foreigner for him yeah in the verse yesterday the line that shri pad wrote pranaya lola Vilo Chanaya, same as what you're describing, Gora. When the love becomes very great, the lover considers the beloved's body, mind, and heart to be non-different from his own body, mind, and heart. Oh. That makes us really elevated in in our. manjari bab there is nothing higher than this this is the highest and this is really uh, the mercy of mahaprabhu and gurudev who is opening this to us mm. to enter in this there is nothing more to to looking for mm. if we get the highest uh, what is the use to looking for other things jumping from here and there and maybe there is an a, another thing we can check there is another thing we can check there is nothing more to check we have to be we get the highest this is realization who has no this realization only they are trying to find out researching whole life and who research it they no need to bother they have to move smoothly they no look outside some specialty but inside they are special outside nothing is changing but inside all the vision change hmm and that is divine mm. we want to change outside but inside is too much blockage outside changing is no meaning or this right no I've, if one is digging for gold, 
and he find a huge gold in the earth, then he will not get somewhere else for digging for gold because he found that what he is looking for. So he will stay there. Hundred percent. If he has a desire what he is digging and he get it. And if he has the gold then he has a desire to ruby and diamond and more and more, then he will never get it. <laughs> no. he, will, he will be only suffering. Yeah. Yeah, our time is time is limited, so we want to spend our time bagging back and forth. Or once once we find a path, once a path is shown to us, do we want to spend that time moving directly on it? And there is an easy formula for this, and this is given by Gurudev. You have to know who you are, and you have to fix your Ishtadev. This is easy. It's not such a if you know who you are and you know your goal, uh, all is done. Then you only have to follow this. It's a, it's not a complicated thing, actually. But if we don't believe in these words of the Guru, then it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And if we do think fixed, then we no need to think other things. No. Everything will come, they will arrange to you. Our vision will change. And they will arrange circumstances that you know more better about that. That is mercy. These are also two of the reasons that Chaitanya came down to fix his ease today, put Radharani as the object, and to realize him as a maidservant. Mm. In the material uh, words to say there is a clear job description, right? <laughs> As a maidservant, Sripad pacifies Viravati, separated Radha, by saying, Stay calm a little. Your lover will come just now. And indeed, after a slight delay, Mohan arrives. Although Radhika blooms up of joy, when she sees her lover coming, 
She becomes proud of her natural Vamya Svabhava, unsubmissive nature, which makes her pull her veil over her face and turn her back on her lover. Vida Gada Raja Mohan, the king of clever pranksters, tries to pacify her by using <clears throat> so many clever words. Sitting at her beautiful feet, he prays to her with folded hands. Lift your face <clears throat> and look at me. Oh, Rai, give up your pride and look at me once. Then the darkness in my heart will be dispelled. Right. How much more will you tell? Take my flute if you want. As long as I can touch the dust of your lotus feet. You are the ointment of my eyes that are absorbed in staring at you. And you are the thief of my heart. The creator has given you the most beautiful form, qualities, and tender youthfulness in the whole world. Oh, beautiful girl, why should you? Be miserly when you possess all this wealth of beauty. So beautiful, huh? This mm -hmm. when when Mohan when Mohan say, "Oh, take my flute." <laughs> so <laughs> this is ever. Uh, this is the most sweet when he like to to change the mood of Radhika. You take you can take everything from me. Take my flute. <laughs> the flute. It's it's a it's it's a flute, huh? So from a cowherd boy. He he has no other things to give. Maybe a peacock feather, but uh, take my flute. So sweet. Yeah, here, take it, take it. Just look at me. Take yeah, it. no. But I mean, actually, Mohan is the. He's he's actually he's God. If we imagine this. He is God. He is uh, almighty. He has all powers. Everything he has. He is the creator of all. He is... Uh, he, there is unlimited wealth he has. So, but... 
he is uh, in, in Vrindavan, he is a, a, a cowherd boy, and this is this is that what is uh, so close to him, and and he will never give the flute to anyone else. <laughs> but here he offered Swamini when she give up the peak that okay. I'll, I give everything. You t you can take my flute. It's amazing, huh? How sweet he is here. If you want, if you take my flute, if you want, you can have everything from me, even my flute. I feel too that this is this is the beauty of Vrindavan that Mohan has totally disassociated himself from this position of God. I mean, he right they, he's praying to her and he says, "The Creator has given you." So he's totally he's only in this mood of of the cowherd boy, the prince, no way connected to any of these opulent supreme beings. Nothing is sweeter than than this young couple. Mm. And how is uh, Swamini controlling this Mohan? <laughs> Today, the jewel of lovers is not able to soften Srimati's heart. His heart is burning severely with lust as he thinks to himself, let me see what happens if I touch her beautiful feet just once. When when he thinks like that, a wave of bliss flows through his heart. Sri Radhika sits on a jeweled throne keeping her feet on a footstool. Mohan tries to please her and catches these feet to place them on his head. But at the same time, Srimati pulls her feet back so that they end up on Mohan's chest. Srimat Kavi Karnapura describes how beautifully Srimati's foot lack then shines on Mohan's chest. May the lack on Radha's lotus feet that sticks on Hari's chest and defeats the beauty of the Srivatsya sign, the Kastuba gem, 
and the goddess of fortune there that is praised by the rising sun at the end of night and that looks like a big blossoming red lotus flower in the water of the Yamuna protect you Can you read again this, Mahatmaji? May the lack on Radha's lotus feet that sticks on Hari's chest and that defeats the beauty yeah. Of the Srivatsa sign. You know what is Srivatsa? No. There is a. Maybe one can explain this Srivatsa. No one. This is uh, is it some hairs on the breast of. Mohan, so you can recognize him as as Krishna. Vishnu don't have this; it's only Krishna. Good day, right? No. It's a sign of of uh, of of Krishna. Mm -hmm. And uh, that makes also very beautiful. But here we can see that even this beautiful sign is uh, defeated by the beauty of Radhika's foot leg. <laughs> I don't know enough, but uh, what I heard, I try here. The Srivasa sign represents Lakshmi Devi. This is the sign of Lakshmi Devi, coach of goddess. Then, this Radhika's Sutra covered means Moha left his position of God. Now, Moha became Nagas Dasi. This is the meaning of this leader. Mm. Yeah. What's it in the form of, of, of hairs, no? right? Like white hairs. Um, that's not the Sri Vatsa I don't know about <laughs> this. Just listen. Some uh, three lines I heard only this. Maybe Smithy did not that this he can. I think Gurudev can explain later when he's back, maybe. Very good.
<clears throat> May the lack on Radha's lotus feet that sticks on Hari's chest and that defeats the beauty of the Srivatsya sign, the Kastuba gem, and the goddess of fortune there. There are three signs on his chest that are always there. And uh, the all these signs are very beautiful. Also the Kastubia gem. But they are all defeated now only by Radhika's foot leg. That is praised by the rising sun at the end of night. This this foot lock is praised. <clears throat> no? Yeah. This to understand. The foot lock is praised by the rising sun at the end of the night. This is when this in the morning we can see when the sun is rising, this beautiful picture, this colorful, most beautiful. But even this most beautiful picture is praising the footlug of Shirata. And of course, this is the moment of separation, yeah, the morning. The beauty comes when separation is imminent. Mm -hmm. Just, I want to clear and, uh, about this three verses nine, but it was interesting. So my mind is um, so Srivastu sign is just the chorus and that they said that you are like this is symbol of vision and Mahavishnu. And uh, here and uh, represent Vishnu Bhakti. And the Kishori, Bhakti. please uh, more loud, it's not not very clear. Yeah, they're sorry. Now it's okay. So just I want to clear then my mind was just up to there. So Dora Sandra Prabhu said this is three battle sign is for Mahabishnu you are like seems like this is uh, the sign of Mahabishnu and represent Vishnu Bhakti and the uh, sign of Lakshmi Devi. Lakshmi yeah. Devi you can explain this Srivasya sign in the... Ah, good day with the here. You're out there. Yeah, for sure. We're describing, but maybe you yeah. can just put, the, put it up in the camera. You want to... Maybe many... many, many. Yeah, Vishnu chest, yes, yes. Hmm, you see. Yeah, there. Yeah, there. Good, if we just spoke about the Srivatsa sign on Krishna's chest, this is defeated by the beauty of the foot leg of Sri Radhika. Yeah. And this Srivatsa yeah. sign is a, uh, it's a symbol there in, on Krishna's chest, right? Right. 
It's uh, like hairs, no? Yeah. Sri Vasal sign is the meaning of uh, humbleness, of kindness of Krishna, who, who tolerates everything. And today he wants to make happy to give her. He has only one thing now. He left everything. What he left, he has only is a flute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Only he knows how to play the sweet mellow of love. Hmm. And this flute is also he can play when there is a rhythm. Then this flute becomes more beautiful. When there is no rhythm, my rhythm is not happy, then it's useless flute to give you back. My flute becomes useless now. Hmm. Without you. Wow. If you not give the rhythm, what to use of my flute? What is the use of my flute? Wow. This is the real Sri Vasya. Sri Vasya. Sri. Sri Vasya. I'm in your control. That is the real. <laughs> <laughs> Sri is Radhika and Vasa, Vasa means control. Wow. He is, before was Sri Vasya, he is the servant of the devotee, but here he say, I am the Sri Vasya. Radhika is, I want Radhika control me. Sri Vasya. Was seven in in control of Radhika, and what is the use of this flute when the rhythm is not with me, and he is not happy? Then take the real flute. I will never play it. He never play out of Vrindavan. No, and he never keep the flute. He only. Keep this flute to show that he is a Sri Vasya. And the control of Sri is, he is doing this. Now we understand why <clears throat> why he put the flute always on his lips. Yes. Gopis were jealous because they want lips. Mm. But Manjari never jealous. No. What a gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I don't know why not they want to go to realize Manjari Bhav. They are happy with Gopi Bhav or Sakhi Bhav, I don't know. This is all of your mercy. Then we can go so deep to understand this sweet rasa of Manjari Bhav. What a gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who 
उद्धव जी से सम थे या वी शेयर इन द गिफ्ट एवरी मॉर्निंग गुरुदेव टुगेदर विद यू थैंक यू Now we go deep there. We are not swimming. We know we are diving. We are diving. We are uh, the this a sai vow is for diving and not a sai vow is for swimming. You can see that who is swimming they have no sai vow and who likes to dive they have a sai vow. because they no feel bored with the living and diving in in one point swimmer like to see many things many area many vision many experience but divers only want to die for one goal there's one is the doer and one is the viewer Allow you explain. The doer is the swimmer, and the diver is the viewer. <laughs> What Guru Dev yeah. says about about jealousy is a lesson for everyday devotees too. Gopis are jealous. Manjari is never jealous. No. because manjaris they want the happiness the pleasure of the other yes so if we keep this mood as devotees we're never jealous and this we have to practice in sadhak deh ah, yeah ah. this is sometimes not so easy this is to we have to to uh, train this every day and sadhak deh practice bring to siddha there automatic mm. yeah now i am in delhi far from all of you mm. but this is my test in my sadhak there mm. and it's so beautiful good if in the separation we can feel you every day very intense and all speak about you more than when you're in presence <laughs> <laughs> we always think well what is good if doing how is he i am I come first of January. From that day, five days was so cold, mm. like a coldest time, three degree, two degree. Oh my God! And you cannot imagine total foggy and very cold. Mm. and you and know no heat huh heating is heater but is not a heater on the arrangement mm. and uh, there was some difficulty air is coming very very critical cold no? slowly so we are trying to improve it but but now is better now the cold is less written mm. because in india cold is up to 15th of january 25 december to 15th of january or 
that's it. That's real cold. After yeah. that, it goes little night time cold, day time sunny like this. Mm. Sometime more also. But normally this 20 days are very heavy. Mm. So they now put some heating arrangement permanent no. because of this. What is the time? Oh, it's three thirty. <laughs> India, what is the time? Eight. Eight oh four, good day. Huh? Eight oh four. Just after eight o'clock. Okay. Take care. If I am not, then you call me always. Okay. Morning time. Okay. Yeah. Five minutes early, six thirty. Yes, good day. If, if you're not there, we're missing you so much. We just no, I wake about... up at four, but again I lie down because so cold outside. Oh, so yeah. I again got to a nap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We call you you Good. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. She's um very pregnant. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. How is the the lady who come for surgery? Good. Good day. Huh? Very, very nice. She's doing massage this morning. She comes for massage and then starting with cleaning and I go to market this morning to get sabji for making lunch prashad and yeah going very nicely. It's important for her. Yeah. She will like I know. Yeah she seems very nice Gurdiv. They've had they've had nice exchange already sabji. Mm. She cannot talk English right? No, no English, but I'm I'm training. We're we're working with both of them with uh, Google Translate, so they can maybe yeah. communicate. But lots of like pointing and smiling, you know. Like, yeah, yes. yeah, that's a good thing. Not too much talking with Indian is more better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> easier, easier for. Everybody. <laughs> and if the Bengali is if not no words you know, then it's more better. <laughs> Bengalis <laughs> because they are words noisy. Siddhanta Prabhu will become angry. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Not not knowing is wise. If yeah. you know everything, then uh, very difficult. Yeah. I went to South America. I start knowing Spanish. One day I realized it's not good to know Spanish. <laughs> so I stopped learning. <laughs> then you need translator. And many mm. things is a protection for you. Uh, I was young sannyasi, and South South America. Only they talk something privately, something <laughs> only material. <laughs> 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 